Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about one of the most common questions that comes up in the comments section on my videos. And that is, what GPS unit am I using and how am I mounting it? Over the years I've had opportunity to try a few different GPSs and they always seem to lack something. And in the past year or so, myself and a couple guys that I ride with have had the opportunity to try out this particular unit and we really feel like we've found as close to the perfect unit as we're going to find for both GPS and anything else that we require out on the trails. And I think you'll be surprised to hear that it's not an expensive, out of reach Garmin unit. It's actually a very affordable device that anyone can pick up. So stick around and we'll get into it. All right guys, so when I first started using a GPS years ago, I started out with a model prior to this one, a typical Garmin handheld unit. Uh, this particular one is the GPS Map 64SX. Uh, the model I had before was the GPS Map 60. Uh, very similar units. I upgraded to this one here just for a few more features, color display. These are great units, very accurate, very reliable. The only problem with them when you have them mounted and you're riding is that it can be difficult to see. They have a very small screen. Uh, it's difficult in the sunlight to read the screen. And when you're navigating around and you want to see where your trails are and how to get where you want to go, it's not a touch screen. So I was constantly having to use the arrows to move around on the screen. And it just becomes very cumbersome, especially when you're wearing gloves out on the trail to try and move around and see where you're going. Uh, similarly to zooming in and out. Like it has all the trails on the screen. It's just not that easy to navigate. So... I do still keep this as a backup unit. It's on me all the time when we're riding. And just in case all other devices fail, I have this one available to me. The other thing we were using a lot was probably what a lot of you are using is your phone and loading apps into your phone, either Ride Command or other various mapping apps uh, for your area. Those are very good options, but I have an iPhone. I'm an iPhone user. I really didn't want to be using my $2,000 iPhone mounted to my handlebars, exposed to the vibration and the elements, the mud and water and stuff like that, uh, if I didn't have to. And if you don't have it mounted, I was finding we we're taking it in and out of our pocket all the time. You're having to stop, pull it out, check the map, and then go from there. It's just very inconvenient. We then came across, sort of by accident, this device that you see here. And this is basically a smartphone. It is a smartphone, but it's a very inexpensive, uh, off-brand, uh, made in China smartphone that is ruggedized, waterproof, shockproof, and personally I didn't know that these types of devices existed in this price range until I stumbled across this one. And the way I first came across it was a seller uh, that I had uh, been recommended in one of the uh, ATV forums um, was selling an off-road GPS device with their own maps preloaded into it and they were selling it as their own branded device. It wasn't until I received it when I was saw the device in the box and peeled the stickers off realizing what this particular brand was and that it's available easily on Amazon for a much lower price than what we had paid. So this device here is called the Bison X10G. Um, it's made by a company called Umidigi, and I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but I'll put the, uh, the name up on the screen and in the description. And this device, as of today, in the US on Amazon.com, is just over $100. For us in Canada, it's $149. Um, about a year ago, when we first purchased this device, um, it was on Amazon for about $300 here in Canada. So the price has dropped by pretty much half uh, in the last year, which is very surprising. And it's a perfect time to get into uh, something like this if it is something that you want to do. So if I was to do it again, obviously I wouldn't do it through the seller that I purchased through. If I need to replace this, I would just jump on Amazon today and buy another one for 150 bucks. The nice thing about it is it's an Android based smartphone. So you can put any apps on it that you have um, that are Android compatible. So it has the Google Play Store on it. It operates exactly like a regular smartphone. So you can see here I have the Polaris Ride Command app and the nice thing is it operates exactly like your smartphone would. And what I do is I store the maps for offline viewing. So they're saved onto the phone itself. So if I don't have a data signal, it doesn't matter. They're saved in the device. 
but I also hotspot it to my phone because I do always have my phone with me, obviously. So I create a hotspot so that if there is a data signal, this device gets the data. And then I can also, it allows me to zoom in a little bit further because the offline maps um, don't tend to put all of the trail numbers on the map. Um, whereas if you're connected to a data signal, then it does. And as you zoom in and scroll around, you can see that the numbers on the, uh, on the trails there. One of the other apps that I use is Backroads Map Books. So it allows me to jump between different mapping applications, whatever I want to use. This particular one, uh, it's a paid subscription for this one. I believe I pay about $4 a month uh, for this service. But again, it gives me all the maps for my area, um, more so than Ride Command does. So we sort of jump between various mapping applications depending on what we're doing. And that's the benefit of this type of device over a Garmin or other dedicated GPS is you're not restricted to the maps that came in that device. You can put whatever maps that uh, maps or apps that you want into this device, or even take a picture of your uh, ATV club's map book and just have it stored in here as well in your photos and be able to reference it that way as opposed to pulling out your paper map. So not only does it do mapping applications, it does everything else that we need it to do like our Cardo. We use the, uh, these Cardo uh, PackTalk Bold uh, headset communicators when we're out uh, in our helmets. And this allows me to control that intercom function, have all my different users that uh, we ride with on the screen here, be able to mute myself uh, if I wanna talk to someone else or a passenger, um, and then add or delete uh, riders as we need to. So everything is done on this one unit. I don't have to pull my phone out for anything other than if I want to make a phone call. Uh, it also has Apple Music, so if you have a Bluetooth speaker um, and you want to stream some music while you're stopped or while you're riding, again, store it right into the unit itself for uh, offline uh, listening and you don't need any data signal and have everything right in this particular unit. Now one of the best features that makes this device so much more practical and useful for us out on the trails, especially when we're wearing our gloves, is these quick access buttons that are on the side. There's two orange buttons, one on each side, that give you multiple options for what type of uh, shortcut you want that button to do. So on the side here, if I give that button one press, it brings me into Ride Command. So I have one touch access to that app. If I double tap it, it brings me into Backroads Map Books. So those are the two mapping applications that I use the most. It gives me instant access to either of those two apps. On the other side, the other orange button here, press that once, it gives me my Cardo app, again, which is one of the apps that I use all the time. Um, I have to start up when we first start the ride to make sure everybody's uh, synced up. And if I tap it twice, then it gives me my music. So. Those buttons can be programmed. You can actually program for a long press as well to do a third option on each button. So it's just something that makes this unit so user-friendly, especially when you're riding and you wanna just quickly get to your maps or you're not seeing what you want, you wanna quickly get to a different map. It's very easy to jump between apps without having to stop or pull your phone out. So as far as any other apps that are in it, it has whatever you wanna put in it. So anything, it has a Google Play Store, um, Sirius I have in it. Uh, it's, it's an Android phone. I'm not particularly fond of the Android operating system, but for the limited use that I use it for, which is just what I've shown you here, it functions fine for me. Um, it actually supports putting it into what they call iPhone mode. So being an iPhone user, I'm used to swiping up from the bottom and then having my apps there, which I can scroll across and close whatever apps I want to. So it allows you to put it into that mode and make uh, the user experience a little more familiar for us Apple users. Now, it's definitely not the fastest phone in the world. Uh, for anyone that's coming from an iPhone or any sort of better quality uh, smartphone, you're going to definitely notice that, you know, it's a little bit laggy as you're scrolling through, as you're opening apps. Um, but again, for our purposes, when we're about to start a ride, I open the three main apps that I'm gonna use for the day. And really, I don't open or close anything from that point on until I'm done the ride. So it's not anything that hinders us in any way. Um, and it's not really anything that I would say is a drawback at all. And of course, the biggest benefit to it is it's a super cheap device. 
Um, a lot of uh, OtterBox cases that I've seen for iPhones or Samsung devices, they're, they're highest quality ones that give you the most protection, the waterproofing and the shockproofing. They can be upwards of $100 just for a case. So for this device to be $100 US or again, $150 here in Canada, it's a no-brainer for, for me anyway and for the guys that I ride with. If this device were to break today, 100%, we'd be on Amazon tonight, purchase a new one, have it tomorrow, and just sync up and load our apps back in, and we're good to go for the next day. Now, to talk about mounts, the mount that I'm using right now, I'll pull it off here, is a magnetic mount that is actually 3D printed and came with the device when I purchased it from the third-party seller. Um, the likelihood of you being able to get a mount like this are slim without going through that seller. Um, I don't really feel like promoting it just because of, I feel like it was very overpriced in the first place, knowing now that I could have got it a lot cheaper than I did. Um, if I was to do this again and didn't have this type of mount, there's lots of mounts available either through RAM or through something like quad lock. Um, you can get a quad lock mount and just adhesive it to the, at the back of the device have a quad lock attached to a RAM mount or similar uh, similar mounting system and you'd have just as good a system if not better than what I have here. I do like the magnetic system. This square peg just fits into the square hole and it's magnet to my uh, handlebar. It's very rugged. I've never had it fall off or never had an issue and then when I want it off I just pull it off and I can take it and, and check whatever I need to check. On the handlebar itself I'm just using a RAM handlebar mount with a two inch extension mount and then attached with a ball mount to my magnetic mount. And it's super tight, but you can see just the, uh, the ball mount there. So what one of the other guys did that we ride with is instead of taking this mount because he wanted to be able to use it on his snowmobile as well as ATV, is we just took the RAM ball mount and used the 3M adhesive to stick it to the back, directly to the back of his device. And that way he just has a ball mount that's permanently mounted to the back of the device. And he can just have a RAM mount in whatever device he wants, be it the ATV, UTV, or snowmobile. So it's very versatile that way. When you get into these RAM mounts, if you have different uh, vehicles that you wanna take them between, um, or just for ease of taking them on and off if you don't wanna leave it on. As far as how stable this is, uh, aside from the one time in, my, in a couple videos back you may have seen where I uh, took the machine over a little bit of a jump, I came forward and did uh, bump the mount. It just moved forward not even an inch and then I was able to just bend it back. It's very sturdy, very solid. I've never had them move um, while we're riding and we do some fairly aggressive riding, uh, some fairly rough trails. So it is a very sturdy and very solid mount. Um, as long as you go with the genuine RAM handlebar mount. I have used cheaper off-brand uh, mounts in the past and I found they did not hold onto the handlebar as well as the RAM mount does. Now the other nice thing with this type of mount is it allows you to do either horizontal or vertical mounting. So I can turn it horizontal and I can still run all of my apps in horizontal mode. Ride Command will run that way. This is initially how I had it. I actually had it mounted to the um, the plastic centerpiece here on my on my other ATV um, using a permanent uh, screw-on RAM ball mount that I had attached here. Um, I just found using it in the horizontal mode while it looked a lot nicer because I was able to get it down here um, sort of in this position down here which I liked a lot better. I find that the map, um, the portion that you can see is a lot more restrictive. So you sort of have to stay zoomed out a little more and it's a very narrow screen that you're looking at versus having it in vertical mode, I just find that you can see a lot more of the map and see what's coming up and where you're going. So would I recommend something like this over your phone or GPS, uh, standalone GPS unit? A hundred percent. It's a dedicated device that stays just for your ATV. It does all the apps that you need while you're out riding and you don't have to worry about switching a bulky case if you were gonna use your iPhone or other device and you were gonna put a, you know, a heavy protective otter box case or something like that on it. You don't have to worry about taking those cases on and off in between rides and then when you use it for your personal use again. So this is, as far as I'm concerned, the most perfect device that we've found so far. The battery life is amazing on it. 
Uh, you can run it under the water to wash it. Um, I've had no issues with it. Software updates when it needs to. And uh, it's just overall been a great device. So I will put some links in the description for this um, to Amazon, uh, both Canada and US. Now this particular unit, like I said, I purchased it about a year ago. So it may not uh, currently be available uh, on Amazon. I believe in Canada it still is. Uh, in the US it may not be on Amazon.com. Uh, but I'll link to whatever the most current version is. Uh, whatever has the most similar features to this particular one. Uh, but they're all in around that same sort of price point. So the links that I'll put in the description, they are affiliate links through Amazon. So a small commission will come back to the channel. Um, I'm not at all sponsored by either Bison or Amazon. So um, it's an unbiased uh, review. I just felt like for something that I originally paid a lot more than I should have for, um, knowing what I know now uh, for the price, you really can't beat it. It's a great device and it'll do everything that you need out on trails. So I really hope you found the video helpful, guys. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and we'll see you on the next one.